And hello, everyone. Welcome to the Confidence on Chain show. We have such a crazy, awesome show today. I hope you can tell that I'm super excited. I am Minister Catherine Storing. I am the founder of Confidence on Chain Ministries, and it is my pleasure to welcome you into our show. We have amazing things planned for you today. We'll be talking about why winners concentrate on the promise. But before we get into all of that, I want you to watch this. Well, hello there. Welcome to Confidence Unchained. This is the online coaching, accountability, and community you have been waiting for. My name is Minister Catherine Storing, and I am delighted to see you today. You're going to learn amazing things. Um, our main gifts are speaking, writing, and teaching, and we get to do that by helping people find their voice, find their words, and stand confidently on their speaking platform. Hang out because you're going to learn a lot. To learn more about us, just visit confidenceonchain.org and you're going to get all the information you need. But for now, let's get the show started. And welcome back. I'm so excited that you're here. Again, my name is Minister Catherine Storing. I am the founder and creator of Confidence on Chain Ministries. And every week we prepare an amazing show for you, like so awesome. And we know that you're going to be so blessed so blessed by it so welcome um it's so good to see you do me a favor and make sure that you invite your friends everywhere because they need they need this word they need to hear what we have prepared for them and we know they're going to be tremendously blessed just like you are so welcome we again are going to talk about four things of why winners concentrate on the promise i mean um you're just gonna see it, it's, it's an amazing thing when you see these four points and uh, we're gonna get right into that so we're gonna go over the four points and then i'm gonna tell you what they are and then we'll go into uh, each of them so the first one is the promiser doesn't lie number two he said he had a plan for me. Number three, he has my best interests at heart. And number four, his track record speaks for itself. And as you can see, we have scripture for every point. So make sure that you grab a pen, you grab a notebook, and you get yourself in a good place so you can receive this amazing word. And now that you know what we're going to talk about, this is the perfect time for you to invite your friends everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, you name it, everywhere where there are people that are breathing in and out, you want to invite them because they're going to be tremendously blessed by today's show. All right, awesome. I think you are paying attention. You are here. I'm glad that you're coming from everywhere where you are. And now we're going to get into the first point, which is the promiser doesn't lie. That is number one. And then we are going to go to numbers. And I have I have them all here. Numbers 2319. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited about it. Numbers 2319. We're going to read that first. And we'll just talk for a few minutes about it, if you don't mind. So numbers 2319 said, God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. Neither um, the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and shall he, shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall not make it good? Oh my God. So if you were ever wondering about God's uh, promises to you, and he's made some tremendous promises to us, if you ever wonder about that, let me just tell you that he doesn't lie. He is good for his word. So whatever he promised to you, he's made some promises to me. I am waiting for those promises to come to pass and I'm trusting fully 110% because his word says that he's not a man that he should lie. And we know that we lie all the time, whether we want to or not, whether we were, we are aware of not, we lie, right? So the Bible, the word says that he's not a man that he should tell or act a lie and that whatever he says, he's going to do it. So I know that sometimes it takes a moment um, or two or, or, or months or, or years for you to see the promise. You can ask Abraham about that if he was still around. Um, you can talk to Moses about that if he was still around. It took a while. Even Joseph had to go through so many things before he could see the promises, but they do. They did come to pass. So the promises 
do the promiser doesn't lie and that's who god is he's made some promises to you and that's why winners concentrate on the promise and nothing else i hope that blessed you i hope that helped you and now you have the scripture you can go and read at your leisure whenever you want let's go to number two he said he had a plan for me and i love this scripture and i know that we're very familiar with it but you know what I am um, going to read it because it's good. It is so good. And sometimes we, when we know a thing, we are so prompt to say, I know that. I know that, Catherine. Uh, I don't need to read that again. I know that by heart. I've known it for a very long time. And right now that's not going to help me. But sometimes, just sometimes, you got to go back. You got to go back and, and really pay attention to the word and not go by memory. Don't stay on autopilot, but really listen to the word. And this is what it says here on Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not evil to give you hope in your final outcome and of course i'm reading for from the um amplified version of the bible which i love it uh, the bible the amplified version is an expanded version if you will and i love because it gives you a little more always and he has a plan for you and me before the beginning of time he said i am gonna give you a hope and a future and it's good for you um plans for welfare and peace and not for evil so i don't know what your life looks are like now i don't know what your bank account looks like right now i don't know what your relationship status look like right now that's inconsequential it doesn't matter that's one of my favorite words inconsequential is something is happening but it's of small importance it's really not a big deal because he has a plan and the beauty of it is that God doesn't have beginning or end. It means that he already knows your future because he put it together. So he's already at the end of your story and my story. So that means that he knows that my plan is real good. Can I, can I just bless you with that for a moment and, and get out of what you think you already know and really understand that the plan that he has for you and me, it's a good one. It's a great future. And no matter what's happening right now, it can be crazy right now. It can look like you're out. It can look like you lost the race and nothing good's going to come of it. But I want you to trust. We already, we already learned that he doesn't lie. And now we know that he has a plan for you and for me. And the plan is for good and not evil. It's a plan of peace. So I want you to appropriate that promise. I want you to hold on to it and not and don't let go. No matter what you see in your life right now, no matter what is happening right now, remember that he said, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. Because he's your creator and he wants the best for you. And sometimes it takes a little longer. You know why? Because you might not be ready. And I know what you're thinking, Catherine, I've been ready. I know that I know that I know that I'm ready. But as I was saying this morning on another broadcast, I was saying that um, you may be ready for what's happening now. You might be ready for this season, but you know that God always looks ahead. And what he has planned for you and for me, it's so good that our preparation, our studies, our education needs to take a little while longer so we can learn everything we need to learn for down the road from that um, for that amazing blessing that's coming. It needs to take a little while longer. So I don't care what your back account looks like. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what you see in front of you. That's the natural. And I don't live in the natural. I don't know about you. I mean, we're here. This is not our permanent home. And I'm looking at the natural and be like, okay, thanks for the information. However, my information, my blessings, my promises don't come from here. They come from above. So I'm good. They come in the supernatural. So even though I don't see it yet, that's why it's called faith. Even though I don't see it yet, it's still coming because he promised he's not a liar. And he said that he has an awesome, amazing plan for me oh my god i hope you're excited about that i hope you're excited well guess what this is the perfect time to take a quick little break and talk about the resource of the month so i want you to take a look at this this month's resource is one of the most popular books written by minister Catherine storing styling faith 
the complete style. The book is not only a great resource for those looking to represent their calling and their father well, but it is also Catherine's testimony. In the book, Catherine shares her past struggles with lack of self-esteem, very low self-confidence, and how God used those struggles to bring her closer to those he called her to serve. If you've been looking for an uplifting book, a style reference guide with key resources like nutrition, exercise, closet organization, and God-centered confidence building, then don't delay in getting your signed copy of Styling Faith. The book has helped people all over the world discover that looking apart from the inside out does not have to be difficult. Request your copy today by visiting confidenceunchained.org and clicking on the resources page. Thank you for your contribution to the Confidence Unchained ministry. Every contribution helps us bring the word to those in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. I love that resource of the month. Of course, it's my second book. I hope you got all the information. It's going to bless you tremendously. Welcome back. Again, my name is Minister Catherine Storing, and we're talking about why winners concentrate on the promise. And we went point through point number one, number two. I will give you a recap in a little bit. But now, since we're back, let's talk about point number three. Oh my God, you're going to love this one. Number three uh, says, he has my best interest at heart. Oh my God, we're going to go to a book that we don't usually probably spend a lot of time in, but it's a really, really awesome book. We're going to go to Zephaniah 3. 17. It is right before Haggai. Um, very, very short books, but they pack a punch. They're amazing books. So he has my best interest at heart. Let's go to Sophonia 317. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction and in his love, he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exalt you with singing. Oh my God. All these things he's saying about me. How awesome is that? I don't know if you got excited about that, but I know that I am. He is so crazy in love with you and me. And that's why winners concentrate on the promise because the promiser is awesome. He is so crazy in love with us. And he says all these awesome things about us. Let's read that one more time. And do me a favor. As you've seen these amazing, powerful words, uh, don't forget to invite your friends on Facebook, on Twitter, of course, on Periscope. The Lord your God is in the midst of you. I know that many things happen and come at different times and we may get discouraged and sometimes even feel alone and say, oh my God, I'm going through this right now and there's nobody in my corner. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody knows what uh, this feels like and that is just a lie from the enemy. That cannot be farther from the truth. The truth is that the Lord your God is in the midst of you and not only that but he is a mighty one a savior who saves i don't want you to to go into this this place of defeat and feel like something that is is uh in front of you that is, is making you feel defeated is bigger than your god he is a mighty one a savior who saves so whatever is in front of you that is making you feel defeated is making you feel like you're at the end of the road I want you to know that your God is for you, that he is a mighty one. He is in the midst of you and that he has your best interest at heart. Let's continue to read. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rejoice over you. He is so crazy in love with you. Whenever you're happy, he's happy with you. He will rest in silent satisfaction. You can rest in his presence you can just feel his presence and be like i don't want to be anywhere else but in his presence uh, and his love and in his love he will be silent and make no mention of past sins isn't that amazing you know how many things we have done that we can be so embarrassed about well actually let me not speak for you let me just speak for me because i know me there are so many things that I could be embarrassed about. But you know why I'm not embarrassed about those sins anymore? You know why? Because he's not going to mention them. I already repented. He already forgave me. That stuff is 
done with. It's under his feet. He doesn't care about it. Jesus died on the cross for all of those things. So I'm good. I don't have to feel shame. I am a okay in his presence. He will exalt you over with singing, with singing. Do you see how he is put everything in place for you? How he's crazy about you? He's giving you peace. He's going to keep you safe. He's going to rejoice over you. He's going to give you satisfaction. He He's going to give you his love. He's not going to remember all those horrible things that you have done uh, when you didn't know him. And even when you knew him, he's not going to talk about any of those things. That's thing, that stuff is over. It's done with. Isn't that an amazing, amazing blessing to know that he's not going to hold that over your head anymore? So it's time for you to let go of those things because I know we can be so good. Can and I Am I speaking truth right now? Can we be so good at holding us back and remembering over and over again all those things that we have done uh, when we should have known better, when we didn't wait for him and went and got an Ishmael uh, when we didn't want to wait for an Isaac. I mean, so many things that we have done. And we can say, I'm not worthy. Um, I, I should not try to serve you because I'm a disgrace. And listen, even if you did nothing wrong, you still would not be worthy. Okay? That's not why you and I are here. Okay? This one right here, Minister Catherine story, and she's not worthy either. And I'm glad that I'm not because in his amazing mercy and grace, he chose me. I don't deserve to be here, but he chose me. It's such a blessing to know that it's not because I deserve it, but because of his grace and because he has his best interest, uh, my best interest at heart. That's why he chose me, even though I don't deserve it. So if you have been holding yourself back, if you have been thinking that you should not be serving him because you're not, you don't have an immaculate record. Let me just tell you that he doesn't care about that. He's not going to remind you of all those things that you have done. Awesome sauce. Let's go to one of my favorite scriptures. I love, 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 love this. We're going to go back uh, to the beginning of, of the Bible. We're going to go to Joshua, uh, one of the um, early books, Joshua 10. Eight. Oh my God, there's quite a few of them. So when you're reading your Bible, I want you to go to Joshua 10, 8, um, read through 10, 9 through 15, and then um, 10, 16 to 27. Read the whole chapter. Just read the whole thing. It is a good, good chapter. So uh, point number four says, his track record speaks for itself. His track record speaks for itself. And if you are familiar with Joshua, you would know that he took over for Moses because he was, you know, an old age and he would not enter to the promised land because something that he did um, before. And we're not going to get into that, but he just couldn't get into the promised land. So Joshua took over. He was going to take the people, uh, God's people of Israel into the promised land. And there were so many things that were happening, so many things. And it can be so scary to be like, how am I going to do this thing? And and you're promising me, you're promising all these things, but I, I, are you really going to be there for me? Are you really going to come through for me? And we can just do, um, talk ourselves out of the blessing. Have we not many times talk ourselves out of the blessing because we doubt, because we think, but he promised me something so big something so big and and you start doubting and can i just tell you that we can we can trust them we can trust his track record so let me just let me just show you uh, one instance here. You have to read the, the entire chapter, uh, Joshua chapter 10. It's really, really good. But let me just read you. Uh, let start reading from um, verse 8. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have given them into your hand. They shall, there shall not be a man of them stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having gone up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord caused the enemies to panic before Israel, who slaughtered them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them along the way that goes up to Beth Horon and smote them as far as Asica in Makeda. Listen to me. So Joshua goes from, are you sure we're going to win? Like... I don't know that there are many and, and you know, we, we're not really an army. How are we going to fight these people? And God just like to not fear them. 
there are some giants. I, I feel very strongly about this. There are some giants in your life right now. And you're like, they are bigger than me. They're got, they're about to get me. They're about to get me. I don't think I can get through this. I think they got me. I think I'm going down and they look like a Goliath and you look as small as David. But God says today, do not fear them for I have given them into your hand. If the Lord delivers you, there is nothing. There is no one. There's no situation bigger than him. There's nothing that is stronger than him. He's got you. He is crazy in love with you. He already said that we already went over. He's not a man that he should lie. He, if he says that you're going to be a conqueror, you are going to be a conqueror. Do not be afraid. For I have given them into your hand. There shall not be a man of them to stand before you. Think about that for a moment. That's a very big promise. And then throughout the entire chapter, there was instant as after instance that Joshua depended on God every step of the way. That's why I asked you to read the entire chapter. There's so many scriptures there that you need to read uh, like four instances where God delivers Israel. He's right with them every step of the way. Why do we have these stories in the Bible? You know why? Because there are going to be moments in your life and in my life that we need some reassurance. We need some evidence that he has been with his people before. And what better way than to see him act in a supernatural way, in ways that make no sense. You're like, how is he going to do that? How? Well, he does it over and over again because he's track record speaks for itself. Oh my God, I hope you got a good word. I hope you wrote down all those scriptures because they're going to bless you tremendously. Before before we go into the, the, um, this show's recap, let me just talk to you a little bit about something that's coming up very, very soon. It is an event that I am going to be speaking at. Uh, actually, this Saturday, March 11th, I am going to be uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Can I just tell you that I am part of the Dream Team speaking tour? It's an amazing, amazing tour. Uh, we st we started in Atlanta and we just brought brought the house down. It was unbelievable. It was a two day event, and now we're taking the same speaking tour with a new word all the way to Raleigh, North Carolina. We're going to be there one day only, March 11th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it's going to be fantastic. If you have not been listening to our broadcast on Mondays at 10.30 a.m. and um, Thursdays at 10.30 a.m., you need to because we already started doing some, some previews of what's to happen and we are almost sold out. So I'm telling you this right now. You see the information. I don't know if we still have some tickets available, but you want to go head over to the website, the Dream Team That Live, and get your ticket now before they're gone because they're flying off like crazy. It's a space uh, that is limited in in seats, so you want to do that. The other option that we had to add uh, was uh, a live stream option that is private, and you're able to get your ticket also at the Dream Team That Live, and you'll be able to see Tina Moore. Brown, Pastor Kimberly Jones, and yours truly, Minister Catherine Storing. We are so excited. Like, oh my God, today we were just on fire. And of course, as usual, our talks are always aligned. We never talk about the, the title. We never talk about the, the content. And every time we start, you could see Tina saying, hey, that's what I'm going to talk about. And then PK says the same thing. And he always it complements each other. It's never the same, but it just enrich. Uh, wherever, whenever the other person ended. It's really amazing. We'd love to see you in Raleigh, North Carolina. So that's what's happening this weekend. I'm so excited about that. So now that you know everything that's happening, let me give you let me give you the recap. This is this is going to be awesome. Um, let's go over those four points again that we talked at the beginning of the show. Um, the promiser doesn't lie. And again, you want to go to Numbers 23, 19, and he'll tell you all about uh, who God is. Number three, he said he had a plan for me. And we are so very familiar with Jeremiah 29, 11. I want to encourage you to read the Amplify version because it's a good, it's a good one. And I don't want you to stay on autopilot on that one. Number three, he has my best 
interest at heart. Yes, he does. We talked about how many things he's going to do for you. Um, definitely read that one on Zephaniah 3.17. Amazing word. And four, last but not least, his track record speaks for itself. He has delivered his people over and over again. He continues to do that uh, from the beginning of time till now. And you can read um, the entire chapter 10 of Joshua. It's an amazing place where in four or five different instances, he shows Joshua that he is with his people and that he is doing everything that he promised and so much more and so much more you still have time to invite your friends either on facebook twitter or periscope and let them know that this show has been on fire that god is speaking to his people and that great things great things are coming oh my god i'm so excited for you i hope you got that uh, i hope you get to share with your friends because um it's, it's an amazing amazing uh season that god is doing amazing things i hope that you that you feel like a winner i hope that you feel that the, that the, this word is washing over you and that you are gonna concentrate on the promises okay is that is, is, is that a deal i hope that's a deal i hope that you feel strongly as i do um let me just give you i thought about what do i do after I get my friends and, 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 and the viewers excited and pumped about the word of the week. What, what do I do? So you can take that for, for the remaining of the week. And I thought about a call to action for the week. I, I don't just want to get you excited and motivated and then you go and you do nothing. I want you to do something. And this, let me give you the, the, uh, the action um, that I want you to take. Okay. So here it is. Rehearse. The pro the promise, not the problem. There is in the screen. Rehearse the promise, not the problem. So many times. So many times we are so good at, at saying, I don't have enough money. I don't have no money. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. Or I got that report from the doctor and it's not a good one. And you go on and on about that. And every time you talk to someone, when you post on social media, when you pray, that's all you talk about. And, and I don't know why we do that, but I want to, I want to um, ask you, I want to urge you this week to actually go into rehearse the promise. God says that he's going to provide for me. He says that he is my source. He says that I am the head and not the tail. He says that he went to prepare an amazing fancy pants place for me, that whatever happens here doesn't really matter, that he has a plan for me. I want you to go over all the things that we talked about today, all those promises that we that we went over, and I want you to speak those over yourself over and over again. I'm not saying that what you're dealing with right now is not there. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is that he has a plan for you, that you are might as well. If you have to rehearse something, why not rehearse the promise? Okay. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to be able to continue to do exactly what God has called you to do. So guess what? It's a win-win for everybody because when you encourage yourself, you get to encourage somebody else. So for the rest of the week, I want to encourage you to rehearse the promise and not the problem. Oh my God, I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy the show. As you can tell, great things are happening. I am so excited for you and for me. And I just want to invite you to come back again next week to visit us at Confidence on Chain Ministries because great things are happening there. You'll, you'll learn what we believe, what we stand for, and everything that God is doing in our lives, where we're speaking at, great things are happening. So thank you so much for watching the show. And now you can uh, get some more information about how you can learn what's happening with Confidence Unchained Ministries. God bless you. Did you have a good time? Did you learn something about confidence? We sure hope you did. This was your Confidence on Chain show with your hostess, Catherine Storing. We hope to see you again next time. We pray that you continue to grow and do amazing things. Until that time, make sure that you visit us at confidenceonchain.org. God bless you.